In today's video, I'm giving you a step-by-step -step tutorial about how you can use Story Engine from Pseudowrite, a new feature that is absolutely blowing everybody away. So let's dive right into that. All right, folks, we're here in Pseudowrite. I just published a review of Pseudowrite. You should definitely check that out if you're interested. I believe it is currently the best tool out there for writing fiction with AI, um, at least when it comes to writing prose. And we're going to be showing you exactly why that is right now in this tutorial. For starters, we're going to create a new project. And I'm going to call this... I'm going to call this Fall of the fairy because what we're going to be doing today is writing uh, or getting a start on writing the fifth book in my fairy queen series i've been working on this series for what feels like forever and i've just been stuck on it for a little while and that is where ai is really great for and what we're going to do is come over here to the left hand side and click story engine this is where the money happens folks because this is a really great tool so first uh, I'm going to go to a separate space and copy and paste some information here. This is uh, some information, just a summary of the story that I had written previously. I actually wrote this probably over a year ago about where this story was overall going to go. I'm just going to pump that in there because I can. We're going to enter the genre, young adult epic fantasy, and enter the style. Uh, for the style, I usually like to add a couple of things. We're going to be saying third person point of, no, third person limited point of view. Um, realistic dialogue. Avoid mushy descriptions and dialogue. Uh, there's a lot you can do here. I always add the avoid the mushy dialogue because it tends to go there uh, on its own. And I would prefer it don't do that. And sometimes just telling it not to do something is all you need. And it gets much, much better just from little prompts like that. We'll say lots of drama between characters. Um... in a concise and descriptive language style. And we'll just go with that for now. Um, but you can go to town with this. And this is the thing that I have tweaked the most. I'll write one chapter and say, eh, this isn't quite the style I'm looking for. And I have to really revise it to get it more to my liking. And in another option is I can just come here and tweak the style. And currently I've got it to the point with the other book that I'm writing where uh, I have to make very few edits to the output it gives me because I've gotten that style exactly where I want it. So definitely be sure to, to play with this. Uh, and then we're coming to where the magic happens here uh, to the synopsis section. And the synopsis will take a look at the brain dump. It'll take a look at everything I've entered in, into this so far and it'll create the synopsis for us. We can hit generate and see what it gives us. And already it's given us a bunch of words here really, really quickly. I'm pretty impressed actually. And this is definitely taking from my original story. And now what you are going to want to do is tweak this and add some more information. There are going to be sections of it that are a little more general. And you'll want to flesh those out a little bit more uh, so that it will take that into account for your outline. But this isn't, this isn't too bad. Uh, I'm just going to edit this little bit here. Um, in, star, I'll say starting in the ruined castle of Castle Silene. That's where this takes place. The book opens with the marriage of George and Una, officiated by none other than the fairy queen herself. But their joyous occasion is short-lived as they are suddenly attacked and frozen in an enchanted frost brought on by drinking enchanted wine. 
Artigal, who doesn't drink, and Una, who sensed something was amiss, are the only ones left unaffected. Kernonos, the culprit behind the attack, appears and captures the Fairy Queen. Una and Artigal are powerless to stop him. And I would go on and continue editing this entire thing to make sure it's up to my standards and make sure it covers everything with enough detail. You're only allowed 800 words in this synopsis section, so don't get into too much detail. You'll have a space to flesh it out even more later. But let's move on here to characters. Um, this will look at everything we've entered so far and add uh, a list of characters. And this will be very important for later on because these characters will determine the voice of the, of the characters in the scenes and all of that. So let's go ahead and hit generate here and see what it gives us. And once again, we are given a limit on the words we have. Uh, it will go up to 700. Okay, so now we have our list of characters. And it's done a pretty good job at taking what I put in there and adding a little bit more information about their personality here. I would flesh these out even further if I were uh, spending the full amount of time on this. I particularly like to add a little bit of information about how they talk. So I'll say like, her dialogue is... Uh, actually, we won't do Una. Let's do Artigal. His dialogue is blunt and curt and can sometimes come off as cold though he does not mean it that way the reason I do that is because dialogue is going to be the area where these characters come off the page the most and you can inject more personality and the more you can tell it to speak in a certain way for individual characters, the more you can get distinctive voices for each one, uh, which is a great way to improve the quality of your output by adding a little bit of information about the dialogue. You can also add more about the physical descriptions there, anything you'd like. You can also come here and say, rewrite the characters, um, and then it will go through and do it again, and you can just add more information here as you go along. Also worth noting here is that you need to keep a specific format for these characters. Say you're entering this information in yourself and you don't want it to generate this information. Um, it'll tell you here that it needs to be in a specific format where you have the number and then the name followed, followed by a colon and then information about that character and then follow that process throughout. Otherwise, it's not able to draw from this information correctly. All right, moving on. We come to the outline. So we have all the information we've done so far. This is gonna look at everything, including the characters and the outline and the brain dump that we did earlier and generate an outline based on that. I'm only going to let it run a little bit because I don't want to use up all of my words here, but th this will just give you an idea of what the outline looks like. All right, I let it get to, through chapter one and chapter two, and it'll keep going, creating a whole three-act structure here. But um, I noticed that it was it, it was taking a lot of creative liberties, and that's fine because it only has the synopsis so far. It doesn't really know how to divide this up into chapters yet. Uh, for instance, this initial chapter here, I wasn't really happy with it. Um, and so I actually think this chapter two here would be better spent as chapter one. So I'm just going to copy and paste that into chapter one and we'll just get rid of this for now. And then it set, so chapter one goes during the marriage of George and Una's sister, which it got wrong. So we're just going to remove that. The celebration is interrupted by a sudden attack. The wedding guests are frozen in an enchanted frost after drinking cursed wine. Una, who senses something is wrong, and Article, who doesn't drink, are the only ones left unaffected. The culprit behind the attack, Kernonos, kidnaps the fairy queen who was officiating the wedding. Faced with the challenge to save her loved ones and the fairy queen, Una must decide whether to face this dangerous foe or give in to her fears. That's fine. Um, that's a decent enough chapter one. I would probably... Uh, if I were spending more time on this, I would probably 
fix this last sentence to be something more specific and direct, but we'll just run with it for now. Now here is where it starts getting fun, uh, or at least fun for me. This is my favorite part. Uh, once you have this, this is essentially your, your uh, description of chapter one, but this is not enough to go on for it to actually write the book for you. And so you, we're going to be generating individual story beats. Now, um, you can do this just by generating here, or you can input them yourself. They do have to follow a format of having a number and a period, and then the description of that thing. But let's just generate some story beats, and it will take a look at this chapter summary that we've just had and generate story beats from that. So let's see what it looks like. Okay, so we have here a list of story beats and it by default gives you 12 of them. You can add or subtract from these. And there's really only about a sentence of information for each one, which is why so far I have spent the most time fleshing out these story beats, especially to make them a little bit more concrete and have more specific detail, because that is important. If you don't put it in the prompt, it will not end up in your book. Um, and so that's important to do. Spend a lot of time fleshing these out and making sure they are what you want them to be. But by doing so, you're going to save a lot more time in the actual writing process because it'll take what you wrote and it'll flesh out a really good looking story. But let's just talk about these a little bit. There's 12 of them. And by default, each one of these is designed to account for two to 300 words of your finished manuscript, sometimes a little less. And so 12 can take you up to 2,400 words or more uh, based on these 12 beats here. And you can add other things to, um, to the section here. It'll tell you here you can add s special instructions in square brackets for greater control. Um, oh, and here it says each beat will turn into 100 to 200 words of your finished outline. So pardon me, I said 200 to 300, it's 100 to 200. So you might want to expand this further with a few more story beats. But whatever the case, um, you have this set of story beats and now you can move on to writing the actual prose. And this is where everything starts getting, I mean, I keep saying this, this is where the magic happens. This is where it gets really cool. This is my favorite part, okay, hands down. There are three different options. You can go with the most accurate version, you can go with the best prose, you can go with the fastest one. I have found that the fast one and the best prose one, they're great, but they tend to get off script really, really fast, which in some cases might be fine for you. If you're kind of a discovery writer and you don't necessarily have a very strict outline that you want it to follow, these can actually be really great options for you, especially best pros. Um, but for me, I, I'm a big outliner. I must have it stick to the script. And so I go with most accurate. I think it's very good. The pros is still really good and most accurate. So we're going to leave it there. And then you can just hit this generate button and see what happens. Okay, so I've paused it for now so that it won't eat up th through all of my words. Um, I'm just, just going to finish the beat here. Um, so far, it's doing a really good job given the input that I gave it. Now, I would normally have given it much more specific input, and already I can tell that that is needed because it is already going kind of uh, mushy, even though I told it not to be too mushy. Uh, this is what happens when you're not specific enough with your prompts. Uh, but since this, I'm just doing this for demonstration purposes, uh, you can just take a look at it later. Uh, and I will, of course, be working on this book in the near future to, uh, to do it properly. But you can get a sense for what it's doing here. It's creating the entire chapter based on these 12 beats here. And the first time I tried this, I was absolutely blown away because the, the prose is actually really good, especially if you give it good prompts. And 
there is no other way to very quickly go through and write an entire chapter. If you're doing it with ChatGPT, you have to do it in little sections and it can be very annoying and difficult. Uh, ChatGPT does okay, but it is so much more controlled. You can get a more consistent style here and everything is just so much better <laughs> about this compared to uh, other tools out there. This has been Story Engine. I hope that this is interesting to you. If it is, I have an affiliate link down below. I do get a little bit of a kickback from it, but I only use affiliate links on products that I actually use myself. So if that interests you, you can get 10,000 free words to play around with. I'm not sure if you're able to play around with Story Engine with the 10,000 free words. You might have to sign up for the Pro or Max plan for that. But nonetheless, you can play around with PseudoWrite and see if, it, if you like it and then go ahead and pay for the the upgrades so you can play with story engine here because it is really amazing you guys trust me i uh, i could show you some of the other chapters i've written uh, and it's just really really good and pretty soon we'll have more to talk about there as i work on this uh, ai book that i'm currently putting together and documenting for you guys anyway hope you like this video and i will see you in the next one